Hello. And today we'll continue with Lion Sack. Here he is. He's just down the block. We got here faster than I thought. There was practically no no traffic once we crossed the, the bridge over. That's because no one actually visits part of the city. It's quite infested. And a perfect location for our guy to be hiding. You two get out first by going to park across the street. Fine. I hope I'll and notice how quiet it is, slowly, understanding what Javier meant. The rain stopped, so we'll take this time to survey the surroundings. This place is eerie. I'm pointing to the buildings down the street. What sorts of stores? They're all barred up. That means they're closed. This is a term burglary. I don't think I've seen anything like that before. I can tell you never lived in the city before, have you? No. He sighs and shakes his head disapprovingly at me. Well, come on, I don't have all evening. He motions me to follow, and I do my best while stepping over the large puddles and cracks on the ground. So, what should we be looking for while we wait? Entry points to the library. What do you mean by that? The fox points to a large building right across the next intersection. That's where the library is. Do you notice anything strange about it? Uh, strange? Yeah, I stared at it. I stared at it for a moment, my gaze bouncing back to Javier, expecting him to tell me at any second. Oh wait, there's no entrance. Do we need to know a special code to enter this kind of speakeasy? I'm not sure. I wasn't able to find any additional information on entering this particular speakeasy online. Seems more secretive than I initially thought. And it said the person we're looking for will be there later tonight. Allegedly. So much secrecy. The fox takes out his phone and discreetly taps a photo, discreetly snaps a photo of the building. It would be in our best interest to map out the area and look around. What about that narrow alleyway by the side? Hmm, it's too small for any cars to drive through, so perhaps uh, this is going to make head counting a nightmare. Head counting. We're going to need to keep track on who leaves and comes in since we have a particular target. The large wolf sews, us, sews up behind us as he's staring at the library as well. Why? Right. And it's going to be hard if we don't even know what the interest looks like. Correct. The fox stares at Roe expectantly. Well, you wanted to come here early. What's the plan? You see that coffee shop just across the street from the speakeasy? Theodore, why don't you go in there and try to see if you can spot anything from inside? Javier and I will map the, the perimeter. We'll need these then. Javier pulls out the same ear pieces from before and hands me one, which I firmly, which I put on firmly. Okay, sounds good. The three of us walk down the street silently, and when I reach the coffee shop, I split off from the pair. Perfect, there's a vacant table by the window, directly facing the library. I notice a few customers dressed in black on the other side of the store as eyeing me suspiciously. I didn't feel safe out there. And I don't feel safe in here either. Maybe I should order something to better burn in. I decided to get a small cup of coffee, keep an eye on the window after a short way is ready for pickup and I hurry to seat myself. Okay, I see you guys. I'm by the window. I see the two quickly glance over at me before they go back to inspecting the building. If I didn't know any better, I would have thought the building was an actual library with how it's designed. There's a fire escape by the side of the alleyway. 
Maybe you guys can check that out. It looks like it goes all the way up to the to the top of the building. The two turn the corner and spend the next couple of moments examining the side. Doesn't seem to be anything here, and it's not like we can reach the fire escape up there either. Suddenly, a hidden wall in front swings up and revealing a man walking out onto the sidewalk. Right, guys, go back in front. I just saw someone coming out from from the wall. Where? Is there a, is there any handle or anything? To walk back and examine the wall, I can see Roe trying to feel the surface of his paws. There are no handles at all. I just saw the wall swing out in front of where you guys are standing. Hmm, the only thing we can possibly interact with is this slot. I can't make out what Roe was referring to from this distance, but he's leaning forward and pointing towards something to Javier. The wall swings. The wall suddenly swings open as well, pulls it open. You see the boot drop slot as a handle, huh? Very, very clever, but I'm more impressed how they made this door perfectly machined and flush with the rest of the wall. Once the two enter inside, the door was set it back into place. What is this room? Looks like a looks like your living room with how many bookcases there are. What do you guys see? Some kind of foyer decorated as a waiting room. We haven't made it inside the actual bar yet. Although I'm tempted to, tempted to go through all the books here, I think we should go reconvene with Theodore. Lawrence should be here too. Alright. I look around the side and notice the men from earlier now staring at me. Their gaze is fixed in my direction one of them even pointing at me. I have a bad feeling about this. I should probably get out of here. And get up and quicken my steps to the door as they start walk as they start to walk in my direction. I speed out as fast as I can, spotted well and Javier making their way towards me. How's the coffee? Oh this I haven't even taken a sip yet. I just got this to blend in. But I don't think it worked. I look behind me, the man gone from sight. What's the matter? N nothing. There were some men dressed in all black that were staring, that were staring me down. Mm, might be some mothers looking to start trouble. Didn't even just, didn't expect this place to turn into such a shit hole so early in the night. Let's stick together from now on. I look over to Javier, who has his phone up next to his ear, off of the distance. Uh, what's Javier up to? Voicemail. Apparently, Lawrence tried to reach him earlier. Why didn't he try to call? Uh, never mind. Anyway, we're just waiting for him to show up now. Why? Right. He should be here any second now. He left me a voicemail saying he's coming a bit earlier. The three of us scanned the streets for a few moments, searching for any signs of the great wolf. Look who he is. Well, scoffs, well, the rest of scoff into the rest of the limousine, which is pulled up not too far from us. Long steps out, just to serve, to serve one inside the car before he spots and lays us down. He has a liberal drive him around, is that a bit? Don't get me started. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see you all again. I was scared the formalities. How uncouth. Lawrence gazes at me inquisitively and places a smile. I heard the news and seeing that you're here, I assume you're part of the team now, Theodore. Uh, yeah, I am. Just temporarily. But of course. I was not expecting you to be joining us, but it matters not. The more the merrier. Thanks. More importantly, did you get a chance to read out the read over the report I sent you? You're masterfully crafted intel locks. I read the first few pages I was extremely occupied today. 
I'll get to it as soon as I can. Hmm. By the way, have you three since the wives as well? I do hope my presence wasn't overly anticipated. We got here not too long ago. We were just scouting around the, the location, mainly looking for the entrance which we found. Hey, oh, yes, yeah, a book return slot. I forgot to mention that to you guys. If you're aware of the entrance, do you know how to get past the bookcases once inside? Can't say I do, but it's nothing Rudy can't solve. Who's Rudy? Ah, oh, Theodore, that's why you don't know about these glasses. We went with the glasses. Lawrence quickly pauses them before sliding them back on. Javier, may you may you like to explain to Theodore since you were the, the ones to skillfully craft them. Wait, Javier made those? The Foster's gaze shift between Lawrence and me, visibly pleased by our compliments. Sure. Rudy stands for Rapid Understanding and Diagnostic Yield, and this is an AI that I created and integrated into those AR glasses. I knew Javier was smart, but I didn't know he was his smart. It's capable of uh, perceiving the world and reducing facial and environmental cues on demand. Wait, if it can do that, then why don't you have a pair, Javier? I was planning on creating a newer model for myself, but I never got around to it. It just so happened that when I created Ruby, Lawrence was around in the office to test it out and insisted on purchasing it from me. Hey, I know an investment when I see one. Now, let's walk and talk to the speakeasy, shall we? There's much to discuss. With Lawrence and Javier leading the way, I spot well shake his head as we follow him. I can see why you don't like him now. Heh. <laughs> you want to know why Lawrence bought those off of Javier? Why? Rose's intense gaze remains fixed on Lawrence, his fangs peeking from his ma as he growls. It's cause he can't think for himself. He's just another sport boy without those damn glasses. Ro walks off without saying another word. I toss away my coffee as we enter the library, the wooden floor creaking as we enter all as we all enter the cramped room filled with bookshelves. It definitely looks like a library with how everything looks. There's even a small reading desk and a chair in the corner. There's no visible door that leads to another room from here. This is what we saw earlier, Theodore. Something tells me we have to find another hidden door here. Can we just wait for someone to exit from the inside like earlier? No need to wait. Rudy, help me find a way in. Lawrence puts on, puts on his glasses and scans the room, looking at every single object in sight. I see, there he is. It takes no time at all before the Grey Wolf motions at a particular book on the south right next to me. That one. I turn around and pull out the book, quickly noticing that there is no title on the cover of the, or the spine. Ah, there's a small button here. The fox whose head level with where the book was, which is in the gap, it presses the button. The bookcase suddenly starts to slide open, revealing a long, narrow hallway. As easy as that. I recommend we split up and occupy different sections inside. We don't want to look too suspicious grouped up together. I'll be on my own. You three can work it out amongst yourselves. The Grey Wolf leads ahead with Javier. Strolling down the hallway with Roe shaking his head, the two of us following behind. Damn, this is a library, especially with the bookshelves lined around the walls. There's a lot more people here than I expected for a place with such an obscure entrance. Some of them are dressed with suits, while others appear more casual, similar to my own attire. Lawrence is already sitting by the counter, talking with the bartender. I just scanned the lobby. Looks like we're good on hidden cameras. Also looks like there's a set of chairs, a set of stairs on the other side. I'll go check it out. 
If you guys notice anything suspicious, try to get a picture at the very least. Have your torso, leaving me alone with Ro, who's thoroughly surveying the place. What about me? What should I do? With me, I have a bad feeling about this place. Mm. Let's sit there. Might be a good idea to keep an eye on the entrance. He pulls a couple of loud sofas just a few feet away as we make out as we make our way over and sit down. He's like, no, this is actually my first time at the bar on Speakeasy. I see. I'm going to order something. What do you want? Color is fine. Well ways over our tall center, Arthur server, dress as a librarian from the other side. Two colors and tall glasses. And keep the change. The wolf's hands are over a bill before the author happily bows and returns to the counter. All oh, this helps us blend in better than you did back in the coffee shop. I will turn a nervous chuckle while casting a glance around the room, making sure the men from earlier are here. So, you got a color too? I thought you were going to order a beer or something. Now I was going to say, best to be sober doing the investigation. And not like him. I follow O's gaze. That's brought Lawrence, who's already downing a shot glass. Oh no, that can't be good. Guys, the fox's voice suddenly startles me, making me jump. Turns out the upstairs is a rec room, and it's packed. There are also several reading rooms up here, which look like private VIP suits. I'm going to say it. I'm going to stay up here and check it out for the time being. Got it. You know, for a place that's supposed to be a library theme, it sure is dark in here. How can anyone read any of these books unless they're sitting under the lights? They probably don't, it's just for decoration. Oh, that reminds me. I said put on these. I said put on those contacts you gave me. Contacts? I gave Theodore the old pair of your safe. You went through my safe? Yes, now quit babbling. You're going to give yourself away. Hmm. I pull, I pull out the small contact container from my pocket. Do, do I put these on my eyes? Is it your first time? Yeah. I recommend going to the bathroom and using the mirror. Why? I took a nervous thing. My paws growing clammy. Do you think you could pull, you could put them on for me? I don't think I have the guts to do it myself. He looks at me like I'm joking, but obliges when he realizes I'm not. All right, I need you to look up. I do as I'm told while well scoots over and positions the contact so that it's white above my eyes. He pushes one of my eyes open, followed by a quick soft pressure, which causes me to flinch. He does the same, places the remaining contact in my other eye. There. I blink a couple of times and blush when I notice just how close Ro is to me. Well, it feels weird, but at least there's no discomfort. Not yet, at least. My eyes adjust after a few more blinks until I'm able to focus on distant objects. Well, it's definitely a lot brighter. I can even make out what's in the saddles over there. Good. Now keep your eyes peeled for anything suspicious. I nod back, understanding the task at hand. I spend the next few moments surveying the lounge area, but don't spot any suspicious individuals. If anything, I'd say we're I'd say we're the suspicious ones. Everyone's here chatting and enjoying themselves. The author eventually comes back while joins us, and I see Javier not too far behind. Approaching us, his face panicked and flustered. I think I'm being followed. Javier's voice is barely audible over the ambience as he flicks his eyes to the side, signaling someone behind him. Look behind the fossil spot only, and only spot. Lawrence makes his way up the stairs. Who? I don't see anyone. Don't laugh, but there. Hey, Daddy. Huh? Ro nearly chokes on his joint before giving an aggressive look at the fox. 
That was sort of a cut wall guard. What the fuck are you talking about? Hey, isn't that what you call them? What happened? Well, as you know, I was upstairs taking photos and mapping out the layout while I tried my best to eavesdrop on patrons. I may have stuck my head into a private waiting room thinking it was empty, but it wasn't, and that's when they started following me around. The thought says I had several and twice with any composer. I made a mistake poking my head in. That man gave me the most lustful and the, and the sorrowful gaze I've ever seen in my life. I do not enjoy the sensation of being followed and objectified. Thank you very much. Listen, just tell him you're not interested. <laughs> Easy for you to say, you're massive. Oh? There's a large altered fox with an interesting choice of attire slowly making his way over from the, around the corner. Um, I think I spot the man Harvey was talking about. This would be interesting. Greetings. What is that thick accent? I had to strain myself to pick up on his words. And what's with his attire? He saw so much fur. He really is a daddy. He grins and gives a sore bow towards us as I try not to stare at his chest. I don't know if it's just because I'm sitting down, but the way he's towering over Javier is ominous. Listen, whatever you're trying, I'm not interested. But I am. Still, there's reason within you, little fox. Little fox, you're funny. Now get the hell out of here, you quick. My, there's such a strong fire that burns in you. Surely you must accompany me tonight. I see while trying to hold back a laugh, he's enjoying this too much. What makes you think I'd spend a night with you? Javier points at the man, but his paw gets intercepted, the white fox leaning over and planting a kiss on it instead. Ah, filthy, filthy, filthy! Javier's face is completely red and flustered as the man goes in and kisses Javier's paw again. Javier tries to take his paw out, but the man's grip really overpowers him. Sir Pizza Perfectito. Ah, so the fox is coached as well. So clever and passionate. Get, get out of here, you creep. Shall I step in and do something? I look over to Ro, who's silently studying the man carefully. Why is he doing anything? You with me. Fuck off. The lost fox shakes his head dis disappointingly. That's unfortunate. I was hoping to bring someone as king and well spoken as you with me tonight. Javier stumbles to my arms as the man releases his grip. This is messed up. I should speak up. This is I'm about to say something. Well, holds me back and gives me a look. Could you give us a moment? I've been waiting the, whole, the entire night. I suppose I can wait some more. Great. The wolf brings us in a huddle. His brows forward with confusion. Help me get this fucking guy out of here. It's not funny. Hold on, I swear I've seen him somewhere before. It's on the tip of my tongue. Shit, this is going to bother me. Huh? What are you talking about? Is there something I'm missing? I don't think I've ever seen someone like this before in my life. I have an idea, Javier. Ask him who he is. What? Why don't you ask? I don't want anything to do with this creep anymore. That's the thing. I don't think he's a creep. I've seen his face somewhere before. Probably from the porn you watch. No. And it would be better if you ask since you're the one he has his attention on. You can fit more out of him. Javier shivers and leans in towards him. His expression stern as ever as he whispers. What the fuck? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? We have an investigation to do, enough of your antics. So if you could, so kindly get rid, so, just, so if you could, so kindly help me get rid of this man, I would appreciate it. What if I ask him? The two stare at me in surprise. He, 
We just wanted to know who he is, right? Before the two could stop me, I turned to face a white fox who's patiently staring at us. Excuse me, but just who are you? You seem familiar. He suddenly burst into laughter, a deep and robust sound. Yes, you may have seen me before, or would not be surprised if you saw me or the news online. These days, it's just a controversial topic, yet the demand for it continues to grow. God damn it, I remember now. You're Madison, aren't you? Haha, <laughs> yes, the place refers to me as Madness. Ha, huh, no wonder you seem so familiar. How could you tell? Your clothing gave it away. Half your jaw draws at the midst of, a, of the name. Your madness? You're so much taller in person and exotic. Sorry, can someone fill me in on what's going on? Madness is the, is the founder of the Delta and taught it as medicine. Wait, that sounds familiar. Didn't I read up on something like that earlier? The one and only. Javier's amazement slowly fades as is and is replaced with suspicion. What could someone like you possibly want from a fox like me? You look like the smartest person in the entire establishment. All I want, all I really want is companionship and help. Huh, that's a funny way to say sex. You got some weird kinks, old man, grabbing my hand like that. You fucking millionaires are all the same. This time, it's Madness who's flustered. I think there may be some miscommunication here. My deepest apologies. English is not my first language, not my second either. I'm still learning the Western culture. It is only how we pay respect to beautiful men and women. Where the hell is he even from? A likely story, but what the hell is someone like you doing here? I come from TAI. There was someone I was expecting tonight to help me, but since they are not here. I need someone clever and smart for a dinner party I'm attending tonight. It is difficult being so far away from home, not knowing a single face. There isn't much time left, so I will be going. I will be some things for a second before wanting to stop Mandis from leaving. Wait, I'll help you. Roy and I lock eyes, both of us equally confused what the hell is going on. Mandis switches out and holds Javier's paw and kisses it again. You should have told me I was in the presence of such a, an influential man. Apologies for my remarks earlier. I thought you were someone else. Haha, <laughs> splendid. Not to worry. I promise you will enjoy the night. Let us take the back exit out. Even if my cabs were closed, I prefer to keep a low profile. Those clothes are anything but low profile. Back asset. I wasn't aware of one unless you were referring to the staff only door. Yes, how clever. I think we are going to get the long well. Now let's depart. Javier turns to us, his voice is low as Mandis starts walking towards the back of the building. I'm going to see what I can find out from Mandis. I'm not sure why he needs someone with him, but he must be working closely with the other companies at at TAI if he's here. Hopefully I can find out something about Cyprus and Blackout. Sorry for leaving so unexpectedly, but I've only managed to put one and one at the last second and there might not be another opportunity. Go, it's not like the task at hand is demanding. Great, Theodore, I trust you will cooperate nicely at Rose by Rose's side. I'm still processing what happened but I managed to respond with a small nod. The role looks visibly annoyed by Javier's remark. Javier quickly strolls off around some book sales, disappearing from sight as I return and don't find a look to roll. So, are we not going to talk about what the hell just happened? What in particular? But how Javier suddenly agreed to get taken away by some rich old guy with some strange accent. Who the hell is he anyway? He's a philanthropist who may have fought to discover ore in Antarctica. Definitely not. Definitely was not expecting him to be here. Oh no, he's one of those guys. He's not your type or something. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, what? But what are you talking about? 
why as well teasing me at a time like this. Uh, anyway, what do you think he wants with Javier? He seen, he said he's, he needed someone capable and smart. No idea. And the man is loaded with money. I'm not sure why he doesn't have bodyguards around. Unless he was banking on being incognito the whole time. The whole interaction felt so surreal. You're not worried about Javier? No. But now that I think about it, I wouldn't be surprised if he ran into other business tycoons with a convincing happening. He mentioned he was writing for someone, but said they never sold up. Must be business related, unless... Unless what? Who knows? I look back at well awkwardly imagining what Madness and Javier could be doing at this very second. Unless I can tell you worried but Javier's more than capable of outwitting people. And if what Javier says is true, then I'll expect him to smooth talk information out of Madness tonight. Well, if you're not concerned, I guess I shouldn't be either. He can he can manage, so let's continue with the investigation. I didn't notice anyone enter or leave since Javier came over. Do you feel comfortable going upstairs to fill in for Javier? Yeah, no problem, but I thought you were supposed to keep watch of me at all times. It should be fine, I trust you enough, besides Javier's not around. Okay? Good, I'll be here. I'm about to get up from my seat, Rose Lord's paw, grabs onto my arm, and yanks me back down. Sit, what the fuck are they doing here? Huh? I follow Rose's gaze and spot a familiar looking polar bear. Accompanied by a snow leopard now without a mask. Is that Christopher and the snow leopard from the power plant? Sit, follow me. I slowly scoot down the sofa towards another table until we just out until we're just out of view behind the bookcase. Ro picks up some books and tosses one at me. Hide your face. I follow his instructions and we sift our attention back to the duo, who are ascending the stairs. What the hell is going on? Why do they look so buddy buddy with each other? You don't think they're friends, do you? Fuck, we might actually need Lawrence's help. He was by the counter earlier, but I saw him go upstairs not long before Javier came over. Roy takes out his phone and proceeds to call Lawrence begrudgingly. Lawrence. I need to come back down here. There's something urgent we need to discuss. I don't care. Just come. Well, hangs up. The sex is here disapprovingly. What did he say? Like it matters. It's not long before we catch sight of Lawrence turning a corner, meticulously polishing his glasses as he approaches. Where the hell were you? Actually doing work instead of sitting on my ass. I was so surprised you called me, Ro. Where is this? Not the second time you've done this? Not the second time you've done that this year? How I asked over you? Kinda crap. There's something we need to discuss. Ro, is that why you called me over? What is it? This isn't going to end well, is it? There are two people of interest we need to, we need you to watch over. Lawrence raises an eyebrow, his gaze bouncing between us. Go on. A snow leopard and a polar bear. They went upstairs and we need you to see what they're doing. And why can't you two do it? The snow leopard tried to kill us yesterday when we went to the power plant. And the polar bear security guard at the Grand Marine. He also knows what Ro and I look like. Lawrence appears shocked for a moment but swiftly regains his composure. I see. Hmm. What? I'll tell you what, of course I'll do it, but only for you, Theodore. He gives me a grin before turning around and making his way upstairs. What was that about? Roy emits a low growl and crosses the now empty cola can in his mom. And I guess we just wait now. Roy passes me his phone as he gets up, the floorboard squeaking as he does. I'm going to speak with the bartender, reply if Lawrence says anything. Okay, sure. Rose's phone is opened to a proxy contact with Lawrence, a last message received appearing to be months ago. Minutes pass by before Rose's phone suddenly vibrates in my pause, a new message popping up on the display. Lawrence, I see them, but they're not talking about anything specific. 
This is a waste of time. Come back down. Wait so fast, he's not going to wait and see what they're going to do next. Hi Lawrence, this is Theodore. Can you stay a bit longer and see what they do next? I really don't think it's necessary. I would rather use this time to continue with our main objective. I'm just about to reply, but I catch sight of Lawrence coming down the stairs, his attention snapping to the counter. The Grey Wolf approaches Roe, who was engaged in a conversation with the bartender. Major Rose expressing it's safe to assume that whatever Lawrence is saying isn't good. I can't quite make out their conversation, but it eventually comes to an end and Lawrence walks off, disappearing around the corner. Roe notices me observing, quickly returning to his usual composure as he adjusts his suit and heads back. Was Lawrence being difficult again? Difficult is an understatement. If he wasn't in Ark, I would have strangled him by now. What did he say to you? That he'll be leaving soon. Wait, what? Was it he responsible for this part of the investigation? He was assigned it. Exactly. How can he just leave? Did we even find anything tonight? The wolf shakes his head and stares off in the distance. He's leaving in 20 minutes. Said he had something to take of back in the office. Both sides clearly agitated. Hey, that's okay. I'm still here, although. I kind of realize now that we're trapped out here. We can't really go upstairs, not until the two leave. Oh, and here's your phone. The wolf glances at his screen as I will turn his phone to him. Hmm. Well, uh, we'll stay down here, then. We don't have a choice. Maybe we could spend... Maybe we could spread out downstairs and cover as much angle as we can. For a moment, I could swear I saw a look of relief on Rose's face. Sounds like a plan. It's been over 30 minutes of spying and eavesdropping now, and I couldn't pick up, pick up on anything. Speaking of which, I haven't seen Lawrence either. He's probably already left by now. I hope my phone doesn't die. I completely forgot to charge it while I was at Javier's place earlier. I picked up the book I had taken out earlier and pretend to read as I continue to people watch. Follow me. Huh? Where? What's going on? Do we find something? No, the polar bear left earlier. It was just a damn cat now. But he's about to leave too. Right, they didn't leave together? No, they didn't. We should take this chance to trail him. And see where he goes. Well, walks out, walks out discreetly. I have no choice but to follow. But what about our main objective? Fuck that. If he wants to walk away from his own assignment, I don't see why we can't either. Well, peeks around the corner into the alleyway and bounces me to go. This way. And there were back streets or weather with puddles, making it extremely difficult to traverse, undetected, but somehow we managed. Surprisingly, it's not that dark and I'm able to spot the outline of Snow Leopard just down the lane. I said to the world that I see him, and we both hide beside a large, muddy, a large moldy dumpster. They're down there. I, th I think they just took away. I'm about to continue my advance, but Ho holds me back firmly. Careful. We don't know if he's on. Best a way for him to turn the corner. Don't want to take any chances. His low voice barely able to whisper. His low voice barely above a whisper, and I take this opportunity to cast a glance over the dumpster. Coast is clear. My paws begin to feel wet and clammy as we continue following the snow leopard around the corner. Please, nurse, not now. Well, slowly he leads the way down a narrow passage, but a narrow passage which leads, which opens up to a wider but more cluttered back alley. I'm getting bad vibes from this. I try my best to pull well into a small doorway where I notice the stone up seemingly stop up ahead. Curious, I decided to check out and see if he's moving again. Oh no, he's not moving. He's I immediately duck down and hide as I notice his head turn. I think he's onto us. Are you sure? I don't know. But get ready just in case. Said there's nowhere left to go. We're stuck. The sound of footsteps intensifies. I can't decide what's louder. 
the pouncing of my heart or the echoing footsteps of the narrow valley. I observe woe, his body tense against the wall, ready to tackle at any moment, or the tension him in the air becomes almost tangible. I carefully inch myself away, trying my best not to get in the way, but freeze when I notice that the footsteps have stopped. Why not saying puzzled looks before my blood runs cold at the sound of a menacing snow. Come out. I know you're there. And no funny business, unless you want your hair blown off. Well, we've been spotted. Well looks at me and shakes his head before he slowly steps around the corner, raises his paws up as he does. Well, will you look who he is? No surprise it's you, you persistent little fucker. Who the fuck are you? Anyway, following me around. Hey, I'm talking to you. Answer the fucking question. Or are you deaf too, sit head? Sit, this is not good. I can't even see what's going on. I jump as a, as a puddle in front of me and votes for a loud bang that suddenly rings in the air. Like, ah, cram. I clap my mouth shut but realize it's too late. I fucking knew it. Whoever's hiding around the corner, come out. Or your wolf buddy, he was gonna get it. I slowly rise and step out with my paws out, like, just like Ro. Ha, I knew it, fucking cunts. It was your fox bitch. The snow leopard slowly approaches us, his revolver bouncing between Ro and me. He peeks around the corner from our hiding spot and lets out a chuckle. It doesn't matter, no one can save you now. You, wolf. Get on your knees and face a dead dumpster, your paws behind your head. Do it or I'll fucking blast his brains out. I feel my heart sink as he points the pistol to my head. Well slowly enters his way over but suddenly leaps towards the snow leopard. And deafening fire bangs off, leaving me momentarily disoriented as I crouch down, paws instinctively covering my ears. But was I hit? Am I dead? No, I don't feel any pain. I open my eyes to witness Ro pinning the snow leopard against the wall and gazing in a fierce struggle to restrain him and wrest the gun from his grasp. Despite Ro shouting, shouting, and me, I struggle to make out his words over the deafening rigging in my ears as I get up. The two struggle, trading blows to one another as they fight the control of the gun. See, I need to do something. In the panic, I pick up the nearest thing and run over as fast as I can. I swing down with all my might, and the trash bag I grab comes crashing down on the cat's head. It doesn't do much, but create a momentary distress of allowing Ro to snatch the gun from their paws and deliver a swift kick, sending them to the ground. Ro points the gun at a snow leopard, bringing an abrupt end to the fight. What the fuck is blackout? You think I answer to, to bits like you? Ro doesn't respond and slowly steps back. Do it. Sue me. He was pathetic as the rest of them. Them? Who is he talking about? His voice is haggard and breathless as he struggles to catch his breath. What's a blackout? Huh. <laughs> his demented laughter echoes through the narrow hall, causing my fur to stay on end. Will caught the, the ground, I mean, will caught the gun, and all I can do is stare in nervous anticipation. Is that it? That's the question. You really don't know. What kind of fucking worthless spies are you? Or does it buzz as a snow leopard slowly stands back up and slowly pulls out a knife from his pocket? Oh, so you really don't know? You fuckers are really all dense, you know. Buddy, you're wasting your energy investigating the wrong people. We're on your side. Answer it. We all turn towards piercing screeds. There's a black van that comes to a pub stop further down. Is that the police? Are they with a the snow leopard? For a split second, we all still expecting something to happen. Nothing. The tinted black window slowly rolls down, and before I know it, I see Ro lunging towards me, practically tackling and knocking me down. There's a sudden chaotic cacophony of sharp staggered pops fill the air, followed by a sharp pain as well as falls on top of me. The sound of distinctive mechanical clatter emanates around as the seconds pass, it feels like an eternity has passed when the noise finally subsides. What the fuck just happened? I try to get up, but feel something tight by my body prevented me.
Wall holds me tightly, a look of pain across his face as he winces back at me. Yeah. Well, what are... My breathing quickens and my eyes widen as I realize what she has done. Tears well up as Rose's grip on me weakens as he starts to lose his balance, falling backward onto the ground. No. No. No! My body trembles. My eyes d darting around, but there's no sign of the car or the snow leopard, only a trail of blood winding down off in the distance. I crawl over as swiftly as, as, as my trembling limbs allow. A heavy sense of dread settling in my chest as I desperately assess those injuries. With one paw clutched to his chest and the other sealed in his eyes, his pain is evident in the grand reality of the situation weighs in my heart. No. Well, I attempt to pull out my cell phone and call for help, but the screen remains dark and, and, was, and unresponsive. A cruel twist of fate then that leaves me feeling utterly helpless. Frustration builds up inside me and I throw my useless phone against the wall, letting out a loud cry of despair. Help! Somebody! Anybody! Please, he's dying. My voice chokes as tears start flowing down my face. Wait, his phone, Will's phone. I kneel down and carefully search Will's body. My paws stained with, with Will's blood tremble as I manage to retrieve his phone from his coat pocket. No, this has to be a joke. Please. I let the already damaged phone slip from my trembling grasp, and in that moment, the severity of Will's situation of Will's condition becomes painfully clear. There's a small pool of blood forming around Will, and I shake my head incessantly, unable to come to terms with the harsh reality unfolding before my eyes. Please, don't die me, Will. I need to stop the bleeding. I need to stop the bleeding. I need to save him. But I don't know how. I try to pull Will up off the ground and properly against the wall. But I'm too weak to even buzz him. You can't die. No. No. You can't die, Will. I let out a gut wrenching yell. My voice wall and it's starting to the point where I can taste the metallic tang of blood in my throat. Somebody, I need help. I need help. Please, anyone. My voice fades and I'm left whimpering, kneeling beside his wall in despair. Our gaze meet and I witness a tear welling up in his pain filled eyes. His paw rises slowly to gently brush away a tear from my cheek and then he offers a bit of sweet smile. Theodore. His voice is faint, so I lean in, trying to hold back my tears as much as possible. You're safe. Shit. I can't move. This might be it for me. Will's breathing becomes more labored and starts to cough up even more blood. My voice is hoarse and it's excruciating to speak, but I push through the pain to force myself to continue for woe. No, no, don't say that. You'll be fine. Your beef. His chest rises again, but the effort in each breath reveals a struggle to convey something more. Whoa! I sit my head and pull this uh, as I try to control myself. Please, you need to save your energy. You need to live. I reach out over for his paw and squeeze it tight, his warmth slowly fading. Tears suffocate my voice and I see Ro closing his eyes, a weak smile on his face. Fuck. Ah, uh, I'm so. Sorry for dragging you into this. This was my phone. Please forgive me. <laughs> it was fun. Build on. I. His paw slipped from my grasp, and I watched in heart wrenching horror as his body lies completely still. It says motionless. Whoa! I try to yell out, but I'm barely able to make any sound at this point. I frantically pound on Rose's chest, hoping by some miracle I'll be able to resuscitate him. Please, please. What were you thinking, Ro? Why did you save me? I pause suddenly and grabs onto my arm just as I'm about to swing again. What, what the fuck is going on? I look up and can barely make out Lawrence, his face contorted in horror. My eyes well up even more. I can no longer 
contained the overwhelming emotions as tears start streaming down my face beside Rose's lifeless body. No one's well. I was talking my words, my voice too coarse to make out anything intelligible. Lawrence rushes over to my side and examines the body. The paramedics are on their way. A sudden pang of pain and dizziness hits me and I start to lose my balance. Theodore, your leg! I glance down and see the side of my leg covered in blood. I've been bleeding this whole time. I've been shot too. There's a sudden wave of dread that rushes over me and I stagger to keep my balance, my body feeling as if it might give way. Theodore. Theodore, stay with me. Don't move. The gray wolf takes me, shouting, continue to stop, but his words blur together into an incomprehensible noise. I attempt to shut out the chaotic world around me, desperately seeking a moment of stillness to catch my breath. I must be dreaming. I just need to wake up. I feel like my legs slowly numb, the noise of the world slowly fading and I feel the I feel the time crawl to a standstill. I'm sorry, Will. I'm so fucking sorry. This was all my fault. Day three for Wayne's here. I hope Will isn't dead. It didn't look good. He was bleeding severely in a whole puddle of blood, so hopefully he does pull through. And so the Theodore, he's been shot as well. So, it's in the day three, so it jumps to day six. So, I guess Theodore will be in a hospital. I don't know what happens to Ro, but you know, there will be a jump like that. It must be from... Theodore's perspective, he must be in a hospital for the, for the days to jump three days. So, um, that Snow Leopard, he said that he was on their side, Roe and Theodore's side. And that he was actually not against them, so that's weird. Um, I think as we continue with, on with the VN, we'll learn more about that, but when Ro demanded that he talk about what that organization was, I forgot what it's called. Um, I forgot what it's called, but that's when the stolen said that he was on their side. So maybe the Snow Leopard isn't a bad guy here after all, because it wasn't him that shot Ro. There was other guys who were in a car that came there and shot Raw and Theodore, so. We'll have to see what happens afterwards about that. And that witch fox, that guy who discovered oil in the Antarctic, apparently has some kind of interest in Javier. Don't know what it is, but he certainly has an interest in Javier and maybe Javier can use that to his benefit and see what he and this, this wits man, these other wits men are doing or if they can provide some kind of help to um, the investigation or anything like that I guess. So um, 
This dog over here is barking right now, so. Anyway, so. Walking like crazy, anyway. Um, no, it's the area I'm in. But anyway, um. Like I said, I hope Roll pulls through, so. About the end right now, so thank you all very much for watching. Goodbye.